Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we are over here at the Guardian Farm, which has probably changed a little bit since you guys last saw it on this channel. Over on the live streams, I've been working a little bit on the appearance of specifically like the room where all of the drops collect, where the Guardians drop down once they leave the farm. I did the roof for this as well, so we should be getting maximum Guardian spawning rates out of this place. And I have this little temple on the surface that kind of leads down to a water drop. This water drop is actually kind of redstoneified a little bit so that there is a pressure plate on the bottom down here that when I leave, it can convert this single block of water into an entire column of water powered by the soul sand. It creates a bubble column and that allows me to instantly transport back up to the surface whenever I walk over this pressure plate. The redstone behind this is a little bit complicated. I kind of went for the overcomplicated approach to this instead of just using a magma block because I kind of, I find magma my block's kind of useless, to be honest. They they pull you down, but they don't pull you down particularly fast. Falling is definitely faster, and it can be made safe with the addition of this water block here. And also, you get damaged by a magma block when you walk out on top of it, in case if you're not wearing Frostwalker boots or anything like that, at least, then you, you take damage. So... The way I decided to do it was a little bit more complicated, has a little bit of redstone concealed behind here. I'll go into it another time, but for now, I'm here for something else. I'm here for these, specifically the prismarine shards, because, oh boy, we have quite a lot of them now. I'm actually quite surprised that they aren't backing up into this chest yet, but if we take a look in this chest at the back here, you can see that we have nearly a full double chest of those, a full double chest here, and I've even taken some shards out of the farm in the past because, goodness me, there are a lot of them. Now, the companion to this farm, as I've mentioned several times before, is going to be an ink farm. We need to get ourselves a ton of squid ink very, very quickly and easily. Now, I've been killing the squid around my base, of course. I've been killing the ones that appear in the river over at the farm, but that's really not enough for making a ton of Dark Prismarine. The Dark Prismarine recipe requires one ink sack and eight Prismarine shards just to make one Dark Prismarine. So you're looking at, with a stack of 64 Prismarine shards, you're still only looking at being able to make eight Dark Prismarine and you need eight ink sacks on top of that. So each one of those, you know, an entire row of this is basically a stack of Dark Prismarine. We're gonna need a lot of ink for that. So today, we're going to work on building an ink farm. Now, for those of you who are familiar with ink farms before 1.13, before the update Aquatic came around, Around, you might think that that's going to be a fairly easy prospect. You just find an open body of water in a desert or something like that, and you convert it into a farm that can drop squid. Now, the difference in the update aquatic as of 1.13, squid only spawn in very specific places, which are oceans and rivers. And obviously the ocean is a wide open space which has a lot of other aquatic mobs spawning now, such as fish, such as guardians in some cases, although I'm not certain if they count in the same category as squid. But there are turtles and other sea life that it makes it a little bit difficult to find squid out in the open ocean now. So ideally, we want to be standing in a river. So here I am, standing in a river. <laughs> it doesn't look much like one until we look in this direction, but actually, the blocks that I'm standing on right here are also part of the river biome. If you look at the biome data on the left-hand side there, it says Minecraft River, and you can also kind of tell from the subtle change in color of the grass. Up here, it's a little bit lighter and a little bit greener, and down there, it gets towards that kind of colder blue color. Not quite as blue as the type you'd see in extreme hills, but still, the blending between between the two terrains is kind of softening that effect a little bit. But as you can see, squid are spawning here in the river and rivers are basically the primary source of squid now. So our task, if we want to build a squid farm, is to control the area of the river in which the squid spawn. And the most effective way to do that is going to be to basically remove any other river area within about 128 blocks. Once again, these are subject to mob spawning rules where 128 blocks is the maximum distance under which these mobs can actually exist. Uh, outside of 128 blocks, they will despawn, but they want to be spawning roughly in about a 24 block or more radius away from the player. So we're going to set up an area where we can have a controlled area that squid are going to be spawning as regularly as possible. The player can stand 24 blocks away. By the way, over there, that is the original village that we found. So this is really not too far from a spot that we have already discovered. But if you look up in the air for a second, you can see the extent of this river. It's quite large, but there are some sections of water here that don't even count 
as river. For example, if we go down this way, this sort of winding section over here, this is all river. So most of this will need to go. However, if you go towards the banks of any of the river, you'll find that these rivers often blend with the surrounding biomes. So right here we have a river, and then in the river itself, there are some blocks that technically count as tiger. So those won't be spawnable for squid because they will check that this is a tiger biome and it will not spawn. So you have to be quite careful when choosing your spot for a squid farm that you don't accidentally choose a section that looks like river but actually belongs to another biome. Likewise, there are a couple of lakes over here, but these are lakes that naturally generate as part of any other biome's terrain. So this section here I think is the river, but if we hop over this hill, you should see a couple of naturally generated lakes like this one here. This does not count as a river. This is part of the plains biome, and in some cases the forest biome that's generated on the shore over here, this will not spawn squid at all, despite being a large enough body of water to look like a river, and in some cases being sort of narrow in sections so it looks like a river, you won't find any squid spawning in here. So ideally what we want to do is remove any sources of water in this area which are counted as river, and choose one section of this river, and we're gonna set it up so that's the only area that has water, limiting squid spawns to that area, and then setting up a way that they can easily die and we can collect their drops. So I've chosen this section of the river here. It's nice and accessible from that village that we've already found, and I think the river section here is actually quite large. Once we step off the plains biome, we're instantly in a river biome, give or take a couple of zigzaggy blocks along the side. Not only that, but we have the potential to widen out the river a couple of blocks in this direction before before we get into the plains biome that exists over here on the other side. So we can actually widen this section out. There's the odd block of plains here and there, so I think the boundary of our river is going to be about here. But then we can widen it out so that we have a nice large area, ideally probably a square area to make sure that this isn't too overcomplicated. But then there are sections of the river down here that while they look a little bit wider, see the plains biome extends three blocks in this case into the boundary of the river, which makes the actual area of the river here kind of small by comparison. Like all this area of the river bank is taken up by plains biomes. So yeah, when you're looking around, if you've got access to debug information, obviously for bedrock players, this is going to be a little bit more difficult, but it is ideal that you basically figure out the maximum area of river and eliminate any blocks which might be part of a plains biome from the schematic of your farm. Now naturally, like any other mob farm design, we're going to require a fair amount of resources in order to get this done. For a start, we're going to need some sponges to dry out the areas of the river which are not going to be part of the farm. And obviously you can do this with any other kind of block, including sand if you want to place it from the surface and have it fall to the bottom and fill up the water that way, but to be honest, I think sponges are going to be the fastest way of doing this, and the sections of the river that we can kind of divide it up into are going to be nice and easy to take out with a couple of sponges at a time. It won't be all that difficult. The other thing we will need a lot of, unfortunately, <laughs> is fence gates, because fence gates are basically the most reliable way of being able to place water sources against a block that will block water. Some blocks like signs, which were really great and reliable at holding back water, are able to be waterlogged in 1.13, so signs aren't the ideal material for doing stuff like this anymore, especially because we need to be placing water sources against some of these fence gates after they've been put in place. But yeah, I think that's more or less what we will need. There aren't that many other components to this design, the way I'm going to build it at least, so it should be plain sailing. We'll also need things like hoppers, hopper minecarts, rails, stuff for the collection mechanism, storage chests, that kind of thing. It's all going to be necessary for the collection mechanism in the fullness of time. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's go and grab the sponges and the wood and stuff first. I will be right back. Okay, I'm back and I have stuff. <laughs> I have a lot of stuff. I grabbed the sponges, some of which are still wet and we'll need to dry them out as we go. So I brought a few furnaces with me as well and a ton of fuel, all the blaze rods and stuff that we had left over from when we initially dried out the ocean monument. I've also just got a bit of junk in my inventory, but ignore that for now. The main thing is all of the stuff we have here in this shulker box. We have a ton of wood, which we're gonna be using to make the fence gates, some stone slabs for the kill floor. It's just gonna be dropping them into an area that isn't covered in water, so they're going to suffocate, which they just readily do on land anyway. <laughs> and then we can use this iron that I brought with me to make a few hoppers and stuff like that for the collection mechanism. The sponges are the main thing right now, though. So let's get these furnaces set up. Let's smelt a few of these sponges so that they dry out. Let's put them all in one furnace for now, but we'll use multiple furnaces 
in a bit. I've got a little bit of coal with me here as well, so we can always bring that. And here in the ender chest, I actually have a shulker box full of glass, and I kind of want to surround the area that we're going to be building the squid farm in just regular plain glass. We're gonna make it kind of like a fish tank of sorts, I guess. Although you can actually make a regular fish tank in Minecraft now and one that we'll, we'll probably have a go at that at some point in future. But seriously, these squids are just queuing up to die at this point. So I almost don't feel bad <laughs> about making a farm out of them. Now, the next step is to calculate more or less what the maximum width of our farm is going to be. And it looks like we'll probably get a decent size area out of this section here. Let's check where the river biome ends on this side it's probably going to be about there. Yes, okay, so this is the outer boundary and we're just gonna cross straight over from here until we reach anything that is not river, which is quite a distance. Again, there is the plains biome boundary. So that is gonna be the outside block of our river as well. Let's actually put these glass blocks slightly outside here so we can use this area. And then from each of these points where we found the corners of the river biome, we're gonna check that every block in this direction. Okay, so there's some planes that sticks out there. All right, so it looks like we might actually have to limit it to more like this area here because this is the first section where it's river all the way across until it reaches the land on this other side. And that's the plains biome there. So let's check on this side as well, see if we get, yep, we get plains there, all right. Plains here as well. It looks like this section might all be river. Okay, so yeah, we're kind of triangulating the position here of the outer boundary of where we're gonna be able to build a squid farm that is entirely a river biome. And let's just check straight across here that we don't run into any plains biome blocks. Nope, looks like we're in the clear. Okay, so this is going to be the outer boundary of our squid farm. And it's a nice compact area, which ultimately is going to be a good thing because otherwise we would have to expend even more resources to get this farm the way we want it. So this right here is the bounding box of our squid farm. This is where we're gonna be able to produce squid in every single block. And we're not actually gonna use every single block as a spawnable space because a lot of this farm is going to be filled up with fence gates and stuff that are limiting the area of water so we don't get other stuff spawning like drowned and fish and that kind of thing. But for the most part, this is going to be the area in which we will be spawning the squid. Everywhere else needs to be drained of water if it's part of a river biome. So we can probably leave the lakes here and there alone. We don't need to worry about water that spawns in caves and that kind of stuff, but we will be looking to remove all of the water in areas like this, which are, are all river biomes. So yeah, that's gonna be a tedious task, but we may as well take care of it now. So let's get to it. So how you choose to section off and clear out the river is gonna be up to you. I'm gonna use sand for this because it's a nice easy block to remove. We don't need to have a beacon nearby to be able to mine it in Instantly with our efficiency shovel, so that makes it nice and easy to clear away. I'm also going to use red sand just so that I can tell when it's sand that I've brought in and where it's natural generation, but that really doesn't matter too much. That's just a personal preference thing. It's just going to be easier to show you guys that in the video. While you're clearing out the area, you might also want to take advantage of looting on your sword if you have it and kill some of the squid manually while they're spawning around you because that will get you a little bit more ink. And it's kind of a shame that there isn't really a design for this farm that allows you to hit the squid to get more ink as a result. But in the end, the farm is going to be so active that we won't really need that too much. And the squid are just gonna drop ink passively anyway. Much like when we were clearing out and draining the ocean monument, this is just going to be about splitting up this area into little subsections that the sponge is going to be most effective in. Usually it's best in like a seven by seven or eight by eight area, but it depends really, depends like on the, the radius and the amount of sponges you want to use. For example, if I pop a sponge say here and here, that's still going to have a fair amount of the water around the outside left to drain, but all I need to do is drop a couple more sponges around the outside and this area is already pretty clear. We just need to drop one more sand block there and that's that section all done. So it's fairly simple to take care of these in three or four sponges each. You can obviously segment it a little bit smaller if you want it to be one sponge at a time and have the most efficient use of your sponge. But I don't know, we've got all day here so I can work on this slowly. Remember though that to optimize the spawning for this farm, we are going to have to clear out the rivers in basically 128 blocks in every direction. And that's why I've chosen a river section that is pretty much landlocked. It doesn't have any nearby oceans because draining the water from an ocean biome is nigh impossible or it would take an awful lot of work or a very, very complicated, say, redstone contraption that can do that. But when I fly up into the sky like this, my render distance is set to 16 chunks. And so I'm seeing a roughly 128 block radius around me and I don't see 
any oceans, which is a good sign. In fact, this is basically the only river, so generally speaking, it's not a huge effort to clear out this area. It might take a little bit of time, but ultimately this area is probably going to be the best place to start. And at this point, it just becomes about grinding it out. It's just a matter of putting in the effort and getting everything done. So I'm going to do this probably in the form of a time lapse because I like doing time lapses of this kind of stuff. It's nice and satisfying seeing this entire area being cleared out. And we might not be able to do it with the entire area that we've got here, but I can at least give it a try. So we're going to cut to a time lapse and I'll see you guys on the other side. Welcome back folks, I hope you enjoyed the time lapse and as you can see this place is now teeming with life. I'm a little bit close for new stuff to spawn but this is just what spawns since I've been hanging around this area and as far as I'm aware this is now the only space where squid will spawn in this whole 
area. Then basically within a 128 block radius, even the river down that way that you probably saw towards the end of the time lapse is actually far enough away that it won't kind of it won't spawn any squid that might be spawning in this area instead so now we have this all prepared and you might already be wondering why i haven't just built a big tank in the sky in a similar way to my mob farm and and kind of got everything 128 blocks out of the range of the land mass in general and the reason for that is that squid will only spawn between sea level and y43 so they have basically around a 20 block range that they can spawn in in terms of the vertical coordinates, in terms of the y-axis. So it's only really possible to generate squid at river level, like we're at y63 here. So when you're designing a squid farm, you're really not left with a great deal of choice when it comes to that stuff. You basically have to eliminate any other spawnable areas for squid in the immediate vicinity. So anything that's an ocean, a beach biome, or a river needs to get taken away if you just want to set up a single spawning area for the squid. But like I said, the spawning area for the squid is between Y63 and Y43, which effectively means what we can do is dig this out all the way down to Y43, and any water in that space will become a valid spawning space for a squid. It's also valid spawning space for salmon in this case, because you'll find salmon generating in rivers all across the world. The problem with that is I don't really want salmon as part of this farm. I already have more than enough cooked fish from just the Guardian farm alone. So ideally we want to take the salmon out of the equation. And to do that, we're going to take advantage of the fact that salmon actually need three blocks of water in which to spawn. They need three vertical blocks because a lot of the time they will spawn in schools. They don't just spawn individually all of the time. So you'll find salmon spawning in three blocks of water. You will not find them spawning in a two block area of water, but that will still allow for a squid to spawn. So basically what we're going to do, if I can kind of simulate this, what we're going to do is have a series of two high cells. They're not gonna be made out of glass, I'm just using this as an example, where there's going to be one block of water at the top of each cell and a second block of water, which is flowing water. And squid can still spawn in flowing water. It still technically counts. So this, in theory, is a space in which a squid could spawn. This is further complicated by the fact that squid can actually happily exist in flowing water. They can swim against the current. As long as they are in water, they are in full control of their movement. So we can't rely on flowing water and that downwards kind of drag of the current to move squid around. They are just going to hang out in the space. By the same token, they are pretty much unaffected by soul sand bubble columns and magma block bubble columns, meaning we can't push them up or down from their position. They can swim around happily in water columns without being affected by that movement at all. The solution is for us to set up a kind of checkerboard of water columns like this, and this will allow the squid to spawn in each of these two block high spaces, and then their AI, their pathfinding, will try and get them to move from one water column to another. Now, diagonally, that might be possible if the squid swims at a very exact angle. But more often than not, when the squid collides with this empty space, then that's when they're going to drop and they will actually drop right the way through the farm. Gravity will carry them down and they'll end up dying on the killing floor of this place, which can either be a fall from height, because I think squid are still affected by fall damage. Alternatively, when squid are out of water, as we have seen, they will just suffocate. So we can leave an area maybe 20 blocks or so underneath the farm where the squid can fall, and if the fall damage doesn't kill them, then suffocation will. They'll drop ink, and some hoppers can collect the drops. It's going to be nice and simple that way. Of course, glass, while it is a transparent block, is still a solid one, and squid won't be able to swim between these water columns with the glass blocks still in place. So that is where our old friend, the fence, gate comes in. <laughs> Our old friend, the fence gate, rears its ugly head again, because fence gates are, of course, a block where you can hold back water with it, but the squid can still pass through because entities will be able to move through open fence gates like this. So effectively, what we need to do is surround each of these two block high cells of water with fence gates basically preventing the water from passing, but allowing the squid to travel through. And as soon as the squid hits one of those fence gates, it's curtains. They'll fall to the bottom of the world and their drops will be collected. So what this means for us is we're gonna dig out this entire area down to about Y40. Remember, squid will stop spawning below Y43, but 
We need an extra row or two underneath that for fence gates and signs, which are going to block off all of these columns of water at the bottom of the world. And we need to make sure that each of these is set up in a too high column so we don't get any fish spawning in the farm and interfering with these squid spawning rates. And I'm thinking it might be easier to either set up a conduit or bring some water breathing potions and actually not remove this top level of water at all as we dig down, because that's going to allow us to move around quite freely just by swimming, which is going to make it a lot easier when this area completely fills up with stuff like fence gates, which, as you've no doubt become aware by this point, are a bit of a nightmare to place in large groups. But that really shouldn't take too long. So what I'm going to do is go and get the conduit so that we can have water breathing and a little bit of extra haste effect while we're mining away underwater. And then we should be able to dig this whole thing out and I'll come back to you guys when we're ready to start setting up the farm. All right, welcome back. So I have dug out this entire area and replaced all of the walls with glass just for the look of the thing. That took a lot of glass, by the way. I'm down to basically smelting some of the sand that I dug out of this thing in the first place in order to get enough glass for this. But look at this. As you can see, there are a lot of salmon spawning in here and there's one sad, lonely creeper on the other side of the glass. He doesn't see me because he's just in this neighboring cave. Hi, fella. <laughs> he's not going to do anything behind there. But yeah, we can actually now start on turning this entire thing into a squid farm. And if we do this carefully, and if we do it from the bottom up, it should be a relatively pain-free process. I've got the conduit and the beacon over here, so I don't have to worry too much about water breathing or anything like that. I can take my time with this stuff, but we're gonna try and do it in the most efficient way possible just to make it less of a pain overall, because I've done this the difficult way where I drained the entire thing of water and then had to, <laughs> had to scaffold myself around this entire thing before. It ain't pretty, it's not that fun. So I figured what we would do is take as much wood as I can down there, but bring a crafting table and give myself a little bit of inventory space left over for crafting fence gates and crafting signs, because those are the two crucial elements of this squid farm, and that's what's going to make the entire thing run. Now, I'm going to make an awful lot of signs. We are going to need a huge amount of signs for this. This is going to be, this is actually, I think, a 16 by 14 area. So it's almost a full chunk of space. Although if I hit F3 and G, you will see that it actually bisects several chunks, which is probably not optimal in terms of like the maximum rates we could get out of this. But I'm not too worried about that. We all need a lot of signs to cover that area though. So let me try and grab as many of those as possible. And I'm going to try and mark out where each of the sign layers of this is going to go. Now at first I think the signs might waterlog. Oh actually they're actually rejecting the flowing water, that's good. If it was a water source in there then they would definitely be waterlogging, but that should be fine. What we want to do is place a layer of signs every two blocks down from the surface, or actually every three blocks down. We want two blocks empty and then a layer with a sign. We want two blocks empty, layer with a sign, two blocks empty, layer with a sign, and like this we can mark out the areas where the fence gates are going to go and where the layers of signs are going to go. And this is gonna be very important for the overall structure of the farm, because down here, right at the bottom, you can see it's Y40 here. Up here, this point here is basically the top layer where squid are going to be spawning. So if we go any further down than this, we're not gonna get any squid spawns on this block, we're only gonna get them on this block here. But that's fine, because there will be two blocks of water here, which will mean that they can still spawn down here and hopefully we should be able to eliminate all of the salmon spawning that takes place in here anyway. Now the next step in this is basically to fill out this entire row here with signs like so and we're going to be not just filling one wall, not just filling the walls around, we're actually going to be building signs out from the sides here straight into the central part of the tank and that is going to be kind of difficult to do at first, but we will develop a bit of a system here. And the key here is that you can place signs attached to the signs behind them, like so. So we can actually make an entire row of signs across this entire section that leads out into the rest of the farm. Now this takes a lot of doing because you have to shift click on a sign to place another sign attached to it and also each time the edit sign message window comes up you need to either hit done or press escape. So that's what I'm doing every time I place one of these things. I can do this quite fast because I get into a rhythm of these things but I do have to shift right click and then hit escape really fast each time and then make sure I've got another stack of signs ready to go and signs will only stack to 16 as well. Ah! 
<laughs> yeah, the signs will only stack to 16. So each time I do this, I've got to make sure that I have enough signs in my inventory ready to go. Now, when it comes to this last row of signs, and this is the last row of signs, this is going to start completely drying out the bottom section of this farm down here. So as it as it stands right now, the only place the water is coming from is this last little section over here. And we're about to cut that off almost completely. Already the squid are occasionally swimming down through this. And <laughs> that means we can get ourselves a little bit of extra ink on the side while we build the farm. Now, if you thought you were sick of fence gates from the Guardian farm, get ready. <laughs> You're about to see some stuff. Now let's see if we can place these fairly evenly alongside here. Yeah, that's gonna be an even number on both sides. So it doesn't really matter what configuration we place these. I was hoping that we'd be able to get an odd number area, but it looks like ultimately that wasn't the case. Not to worry. We can place these fence gates in this sort of formation. And yeah, the next stage is going to be a little bit difficult because we're gonna to have to build these in a crisscross pattern. We're gonna to have to build them in a kind of checkerboard pattern. So that's going to require a little bit of shift clicking like so to make sure that they come out one block at a time. It's probably going to be easier actually to just build giant rows of these things and then take out the ones we don't need, which is ultimately going to need more fence gates to pull off in the grand scheme of things, but that's going to result in the whole, the whole operation just being a little bit easier. Now already the squid are actually swimming down here, a little bit curious at what I'm doing, but we're not done with this layer yet. What we need to do is place the fence gates on top of the ones that I've left behind like so. And I'm pretty sure this is the most efficient, the most expedient way of doing this. There might be a slightly faster way, but as long as you're moving around in the water like this and you've got infinite water breathing, thanks to the conduit or a water breathing potion, it's still gonna be possible to place these relatively quickly. And once they're all in position, you need to open those so that the squid will be able to fall through. And then when we come through with our next layer of signs, which we're gonna to have to do, we're gonna to have to do multiple layers of the signs like this. We are gonna to have to place individual water sources on each of these blocks here in between the fence gates. So that's gonna be a tricky part as well, but it's gonna be worth it. And look, <laughs> we're already getting free ink out of this. Oh, and you can even place the fence gates on top of the signs if you can be accurate enough with your placement. So that might eliminate the need for making the rows of fence gates in the first place. Totally depends on how accurate you feel like you can be. If you don't feel like you're particularly accurate with your placement like that, then do not worry about placing them on top of the signs. Just make big rows of them and that should be fine. Basically, oh, <laughs> we've, got a, we've got a zombie ballerina <laughs> joining us down here. Da -da -dee, da -da -da. All right, get out of here. Had enough of you. And <laughs> the moral of the story here is to build this farm from the bottom up instead of from the top down as well, because building it from the top down is going to be an absolute nightmare, but building it from the bottom up allows you to work with the water as you go up and it's relatively painless. And there we go. It's only taken me about 20 minutes in total to do all of this, which I'm actually kind of impressing myself at this stage because this looks like a lot of work. Compared to the Guardian farm though, this is a piece of cake, mainly because there's nothing attacking you during the process. So you can just get on with it. The next step is going to be a little bit more difficult because like I said, each of these individual areas in between the fence gates is going to need to contain a bucket of water flowing downwards. So we're going to need to bring a shulker box full of water. We're going to need multiple trips to the surface. It would probably help to just make as many buckets as you can throughout the process of this. In fact, I brought some iron with me. We may as well use it for something other than hoppers by making ourselves a ton more buckets. And the key here is to do this systematically as much as possible. So do this row by row. Keep track of where you are. You know, make a spreadsheet if you can. <laughs> this is effectively what you got to do and you got to play the water against each one of these fence gates, which once again, you'll have to shift click to do so that you don't close the fence gate by mistake. But it looks like we've got eight rows to take care of here. Eight buckets of water that we need to place so we can just fill up the hot bar with buckets of water, keep refilling them from this source over here, and we should be able to get this done. Okay, and that should be all of the water sources placed in here. And the only way we can really tell whether or not I've done this right is to place the next row of signs and see if any of the water in this disappears. If this stays looking more or less the same, then we've done a good job. If, we, if, if it doesn't, if there are any gaps here and there, then we can just swoop in with a water bucket and place the water bucket on that fence gate and that will be absolutely fine. So now I have to go back to making signs and basically this entire process is gonna be repeating this one, two, three, four, five, six more times. <laughs> so I hope you guys are prepared for a long and very, very tedious 
farm building process. But believe me, the results are going to be worth it once we get there. So I'm going to do the rest of this off camera, naturally. Not going to subject you guys to any more of this than is necessary. And I will see you guys when we have a completed ink farm. And this is the finished result. It's finally done, and oh boy, has this taken me a while. Let me tell you, I've spent my entire evening doing this to the point where I almost think this episode is going to be a little bit late again. But let me count 23 blocks or so away. Let me actually break some of this remaining spruce wood. I'm amazed that I even have any spruce wood left after all of this. But let me count 23 blocks away from this farm here. We're going to just place all of this down and I'll see where my AFK spot can be. Now, the thing about squid, of course, is that they suffer from the same problem a lot of other mobs do, in that when you get 32 blocks away from them, you have to be 23 blocks away from them for them to naturally spawn. But when you're 32 blocks away from them, their mob AI stops working and they don't move, meaning they just sit in place. And a lot of the time that means that squid can't really like swim through the water and fall down through the farm. So you have to kind of Figure out what the middle ground is there of where to stand that you're close enough to the farm for the mob AI to work, but far enough away for them to spawn. So ideally, we want to be 23 blocks away from somewhere around the middle of the farm, and we're not going to get the entire area to spawn in any case. The optimal configuration for this farm is to have like a bend in a river somewhere where every point in the river that is spawnable can be between 23 and 32 blocks away from the player. Sadly, it's very difficult to get those kind of conditions naturally in survival because you're restricted by the generation of the world around you. But standing right here, I can cut to my camera account which I have positioned at the bottom of the farm and just look at the amount of ink we're getting it's it's pretty incredible <laughs> if you'll excuse the pun it is incredible because we have squid dropping through here more or less constantly I mean you're not seeing any generating right now but they will they will come through here there are probably a few swimming around up here they might be slightly out of range but they will fall down here and they will drop an absolute ton of ink this is only phase one, but unfortunately I am running out of time for this video, so we are going to have to cut this video here. I think I've done enough in this video anyway, but this is going to be like the Guardian farm where there is a, a two-stage plan in progress. <laughs> there we go. We've got a squid falling there. Yeah, I think a couple of those were just outside of the range. Uh, and so I might have to AFK ever so slightly closer to the farm for them all to be able to fall through. But my gosh, they are falling through now. <laughs> so that's pretty awesome. But yeah, like I said, we're going to do a part two for the collection mechanism. I'm going to actually make the collection mechanism something a little bit special. We're going to look at some shulker box, automatic loaders, stuff like that, because I feel like I will want to bring this ink with me back to the farmhouse and to the guardian farm so I can make a ton of Dark Prismarine there. But that is going to be it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.